What's up, everybody? Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. I am your host. Today, I have a special guest named Stephen Bray, the king. Maybe even as we were talking about uh, some of these stages, uh, Steve knows the secret behind where I found these stages. But uh, I'm so excited for you to be here, Steve. Um, a true king, and I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here, good sir. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. It's going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tell us what kind of business that you have. Let's start there because uh, you have you have a big story and a lot to uh, be able to share a value. And so I want to be able to get to it. So, you know, basically, as it stands today, um, I started in temp power back. Uh, I was a field electrician back in uh, 1975 when I started in the field and and uh, and actually I bought the company in 1984 and we kind of did the same thing, temporary power for construction sites. Uh, we would just supply simple poles and wire and equipment and cords and boxes and things like that for for to build a home or a commercial site. And yeah. um, after I bought the company in 84, we began I, I started a generator company and then we started a utility so we break it down into three different divisions we've got construction services we do that in arizona nevada california and texas and then um, we have a generator company that does generators for anything you can imagine we uh, we own most of them um, you know in our fleet we cover the united states disasters uh, wow. electrical, um, outages, a anything you can imagine we've done it. So if you said, you know, what about a backyard concert or what about, and w I had a division where we did entertainment, we did 151 dates of the Rolling Stones with wow. generators around the country and the world. But eventually we were all over the world with that. Um, I actually ended up selling that division. Wow. Um, at, you know, in, in 91, but, uh, so that rental, we, we take care of people with rental, um, yeah. whatever they need. And then the third division is we service and maintain mission critical generators for hospital data centers, cell sites, you name it. We, you know, we cover repairs and maintenance. So in that yeah. sense, we're like the copier man. They call us up and they go, Hey, our copier is not working. And, Right. Fix it, you know, but we do that with generators and big, yeah. you know, big generators. Yeah. The, the, these are not just things where they can't get something printed. This is like we have 400 people in beds that might die. We need you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we 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 take care of that. It's a very proactive business, you know, cycling through. We do work for Amazon, Walmart, you know, wow. anybody that you can that, you know, we, we, we've got a robust customer list. Yeah. Love that. Well, uh, you've got a, a huge resume. You didn't even, I mean, you, <laughs> I loved how you just like slightly like rolled in there that you, you were doing work for the Rolling Stones or it just, I, I love the, the rap sheet, um, for lack of better terms. I, you're, yeah. you have, you have a lot of success. I want to know for a guy like you that just seems so maybe intense when i first talked with you just a little bit ago you're like yeah i like hanging out with crazy people because they're like me basically you know <laughs> so yeah. for a guy like you same as me what like pushes you what's your why why are you still at it you're talking about i sold this company in 91 we did this like but you're just as excited about business and life today it seems like what what's what's in it yeah um well originally i i mean to be honest with you, I mean, I, you know, I'm a Christian and I, I, I received a very really realistic calling in 1984. So prior to that, I wanted to be a pastor. I was just kind of a field electrician and waiting sort of to get, you know, knighted as a pastor by a pastor. And, um, I had this encounter where I realized my life is to build value into, you know, people, uh, in, you know, make a profit. And then we move a lot of that money into, uh, you know, world mission type of work right. through, uh, a, a, a foundation I founded in 05 called the giving university. And we basically teach people about generosity. So 
it's all one big ball of, you know, it, you know, enjoying work. And um, I, I always love to tell the friends that I know that are pastors. Um, I drive into work every day and thank God I'm not a pastor and I enjoy <laughs> And I love my job. Um, yeah. And so it's, you know, that that's where the energy comes from, it, it, because I, I feel like I'm doing what I was made to do. Yeah. Yeah. W that moment. I mean, <clears throat> I think that there's a lot of business owners that are like in the same seat as you. They're like, OK, like I want to I want to go after this thing, this hill, this this challenge, this business. You know, we, we put the thing in front of us. Um but oftentimes we don't necessarily feel like this is what I was made to do. What's the difference for you? How did you get there? What's the difference? And how did you get there? One of just like, I'm just doing this because I didn't want to do the pastor thing versus like, no, 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 no. I was made to do this business. And was there like a moment there? Yeah, the, you know, there really was. Um, and that was a moment of, you know, where I, what I call, um, the moment of, of, you know, calling, which was, I thought the best thing I could do was to be a pastor. That's what right. I thought. Yeah. So I thought, you know, in the, in 84, it was the, there's two things you could do that were important as a Christian was be a pastor, or be a missionary. So I, you know, picked right. pastor and I'm, and one of my most amazing whim, uh, uh, mentors was John Wimber. John, um, you know, wow. I was in his course to go plant a church and I'm first quarter in the church and he goes, I want you to go pray about where, what geographic location you're going to go to. And so I went home, you know, dear Jesus, you know, where do you want me to plant a church? And I got this very clear, I don't want you to plant a church. I'm going to bless wow. you in business so you can be a blessing in the kingdom. Yeah. So. And, and Wimber was all about, you know, kingdom. So that was that moment. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, I have, you know, I, I, I know that you're going to, you know, ask the question at some point about what was your, you know, what bad decision did you make? Um, right. I didn't value the business that I actually had. So there was a period of time in the, uh, you know, in the late nineties where I hated you know, the, you know, the power business and, you know, the oil right. and iron and dirt and generators and construction guys and, and you know, employees everywhere and the service aspect of it, right. you know, just all those difficulties. I hated it. And um, because everyone was creating these, you know, uh, you don't have to make profit, uh, you know, internet success, all of those things. And I thought I missed it. I missed it. What did I, you right. know, I was focused on, on this thing. And, um, that all blew up, you know, the dot bomb blew up and, right. um, I was out raising money and I was talking to, uh, a VC guy and, and he invested, he bought 28% of my company at that time in 2001. And I said, you know, why did you invest in this company? He goes, Oh, we hate internet businesses. And, <laughs> We yeah. want bricks and mortar and we want business, you know, people yeah. that are doing things that have long lasting, you know, yeah. effect on power's not going and, anywhere. <clears throat> and you know what? And then I had this epiphany where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting in the catbird seat with power. We, you know, we can do anything with, you know, with power and it's always, you know, necessary. And, you know, we, we've, you know, I've operated from that standpoint ever since. And part of the energy is that I love, you know, growth. And so we grew from 1984 through to uh, 2006 at a 32% compounded growth rate. Wow. And yeah, which is like, I, sometimes I think, you know, if I was counseling a guy, you know, 27, I'd say, don't do that. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you were hiring people left and right, all kinds of challenges. I can only imagine that that was just the stickiest two decades starting, of your life. Starting things and, and, you know, and, and, and all of that. So, um, but I mean, what a blast we, you know, we, we've had, and you know, we're still having a blast. I have a lot of great people that work for me. 
um, and they're all intricately involved, uh, you know, in, in the business. So it's yeah. been, you know, it's been a lot of fun. So that, I think that answers, you know, you still have energy and passion for it because the, yeah. you don't have to every, you know, everyone has these, you know, uh, you know, I want to sell my company and I want to, you know, move on to the next thing. Well, what's the next thing you're going to golf, you know, you, what, 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 <laughs> you know, it's like that would be a sentence of death to me and yeah. my wife and I would probably be divorced if yeah you if, need to if, go do something more extreme <laughs> <laughs> so which yeah. is you know it, it's funny we we uh, likened over a quick uh, a quick big game hunting few minutes before we hit the record button but it's it's things like that when you said about your wife I I think about the moments where you know even though Julie my wife because I'm younger or I have younger kids um and so you know, me being gone for two week elk hunt isn't necessarily the most practical thing when we've got four under the age of nine. Right. But, but at the same time, she's like, get out of here, please. Like <laughs> right. Right. go do the extreme thing because that's what gives you energy, which is exactly what you're talking about. Right. Even after all the success and you've, uh, for all intents and purposes, hit the mountaintop. It's like, no, no, no. It's just a yeah. false top. I'm not even there yet. You know? Right. Exactly. It is. It is. And you know, even like with hunting, um, I always, you know, talk about the fact that it's, it's actually not, you know, getting the elk or the antelope or whatever you're hunting. It's actually the whole process in, you know, that's going, that you're going through. And those are the stories you're talking about. Right. Um, one of my best hunts was I got totally skunked for seven days. I rode 64 hours on horseback. And wow. as I'm, as I'm clicking through you know, my, you know, my ride, my time, it, it, you know, it was all these stories that we were talking about and all these experiences and all this stuff that was happening. So it was really, really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a uniqueness of the correlation between, especially elk hunting, just because <laughs> you can go a long time without seeing one. And then all of a sudden, right. boom, they're all there. Right. Yeah. Um, you get one opportunity, one shot type of thing. Um, right. or maybe you maybe you don't, and you don't get any right. opportunity and you go home and with tag suit. But the reality of it there is that if that was the only thing you were going for, to your point, you missed it. Yeah. You missed it. And then the camaraderie, and then, the guys, everything. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's, uh, and that, and to be honest with you, that's a lot about business. I mean, you, there, there's every once in a while you hit, um, you hit, a home run. Very rarely do you get a grand slam, but right. you've got to base your baseball on hits, you know, hits and on bases, steals, all those kinds of things. That's, that's yeah. how you get points. Not yeah. Grand slam in it. Exactly. <clears throat> it was funny. Just keep this uh, vein here for a second on hunting. I, my nine-year-old um, daughter, she's learning how to pull back a bow and she's shooting a little kid's bow. And um, we were talking about practicing and and really the point of even her practicing right now, cause it's not like it has any weight on it. It's just, she's learning how to, to hold the bow, to balance it, to right. you know, pull it back, to get the, just the feel of yeah. it every single time, do the same thing every time, get the motions. And, um, and so I was explaining to her what the, the, the purpose of, even at this age, even though she can't shoot an animal with this bow, like there's no, like this is not going to do anything. Right. She can't go hunting. <laughs> But it's the it's the mechanics, it's the little things that she's learning because later when she does have an opportunity, even at my stage, it's like I practice over and over and over and over and over. So that way when I am in the moment, when I do have that one very quick one opportunity, I didn't like self-sabotage. And so right. correlating that to business, it's like, okay, so all these you know hits and steals and runs along the way are what add up to over the course of time. You can look back and go, well, yep. I wasn't really focused on, you know, just killing the animal every time it was, I was the mechanics, which put me in the right position at that time so that I could kill the animal. But there was lots of other right. times where I didn't get the opportunity. Right. Right. Yep. That's really good. What do you think? For the golfers, um, for the golfers it, you know, Tiger Woods hits a thousand golf balls a day. Exactly. Yeah. Golf isn't bad. It's just bad for me and you. <laughs> what do you think? Um, let's, let's transition here. Um, you, you, you kind of told a little bit of a story there around growing multiple divisions, um, you know, buying the company. Tell us just real quick, um, of a good decision that you made 
in those maybe early years when it was really chaotic and you were growing that maybe led to the growth or that helped you manage the growth? Yeah. So, um, if, the, if, you know, every once in a while somebody will say, well, what two qualities, you know, propelled you one is I'm yeah. extremely fiercely curious. Love so, that. Define just, that for me. What does that mean? Well, it, you know, you, you, you've got this power platform. What else could we do with that? And then dig into that. You've got, you know, you've got all these ancillary ideas and products and things like that. Go, you know, go chase after those and figure out how you can make those integrated into the company or, you know, dump the idea and, you know, keep moving. Um, right. Curiosity uh, allows us to learn and grow. And so I am, you know, I'm, I'm like fiercely curious, partially, partially because when I stepped into business, um, I, you know, when that moment happened where, uh, you know, I, I'm getting called into away from being a pastor and into business. I was like me, I, I barely graduated from high school. Literally. Yeah. I graduated in January cause they wanted me out and I, had to come back to my small town to, you know, walk with and get my, you know, degree, but I didn't have any background in business, finance, banking, you know, all those things. I had to learn every single thing. I, yeah. you know, I had to plod through that. That curiosity is what, what helped me. The other thing um, that allowed me to, you know, grow and to develop, uh, the, the company as it is today is I, I'm a fierce delegator. I mm. love to delegate. Um, I like to see other people do the work, you know, that, that I know I can do, but I'd like to see them do it themselves. And that allows them, you know, to have a greater role in the company, but it also allows yeah. us to grow and expand. So you don't, you don't grow at 32% compounded rate. If you're, you, you know, where everything is. Exactly. Impossible. Yeah, it is. It's, it's actually lack of control, but that sounds bad. Like, wait a second, I'm out of control. I don't know where everything is. What would you say to that listener who's thinking those thoughts right now? Well, if, you know, if, if you're talking to a banker or, you know, an auditor um, and they go, you're out of control, you want to, yeah. you know, button it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you might want to, you know, you know, talk them down from that observation. But, you know, you know, right now, you know, I have, P, I have uh, you know, I have three or four hundred trucks on the road all over the country. You know, am I in control of that? Well, right. I've got really good people that are, you know, watching, monitoring, fixing, repairing and things like that. Can't possibly have my fingerprints on all that stuff, I, you, you have to let go in order yeah. to, you know, operate and, you know, build your, your organization. So control is a tricky word because it is. I feel like we have a really good control on our business. That's um, right. And, uh, but it's not all about me. Yeah. You said we, we have control. We. It's not that control doesn't exist because control still has to exist in order for there to be. Yep order in order for yep. there to be success you have to have order okay yep. so we're back 19 you know 89 90 and you're growing at you know 32 percent compounding growth which means you're hiring i mean you're hiring whole teams <laughs> at once yep. and um and all across the country this is not just in one singular office well I, at that in, in, in 91 we were pretty much local in southern california because we were growing the, okay. You know, we were growing the construction services business and it wasn't till later on, you know, like mid nineties, we started to expand into other States and partially, sure. you know, we went to, we went to um, Las Vegas because we were in, you know, we, we could feel the recession coming and we knew that we had the ability to go to that state and do, um, do the work that that was there. So a lot of the adversity caused us to push out, you know, Move, yeah. you know, move to, you know, move out to other geographic locations that were, you know, growing green, you know, growing yeah. green grass. And um, so, you know, the, the biggest migratory 
you know, animal in the world, uh, you know, mows grass, they have the biggest, it's bison and they, you know, yeah. the, the African bison and they just keep chewing and moving and keep, you know, keep, yeah. you know, keep going. And that's, that's what we did. Hey, Kings and Queens, Chaz Wolf. I want to talk to you about something that's super important to me. We put a lot of time and effort, we meaning myself and my team into this podcast, into the content that goes out every single day. And if you have been getting any sort of value or insight from this, we want it to be able to reach other business owners too. So we would love if you would like, comment, share, leave a review, post, share again, <laughs> all of the things on social media, on all the different platforms, or even on the podcast mediums of Apple and Spotify. We would love to be able to get our content into more hands, more entrepreneurs, so they can grow their business as quick as possible. Together, we are building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are committed to growing their businesses to new heights. So let's do this. Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Yeah, I love that. Just keep chewing, keep going. <clears throat> my, I guess my kind of underneath question for that would be, okay, so you're delegating, you're giving things away, you're not, you're controlling, but not con, you know, putting your fingerprint on everything. What were you saying to yourself at that moment? Because I could see or hear some of the listeners saying, well, I'd be super overwhelmed or there'd be just a lot going on or I'd come home and I wouldn't be able to sleep or my, like all of these things that could be happening inside of a growth, you know, tornado like that. What was happening inside of your mind at that time? What were you telling yourself? Um, you know, I, and you know, look, we can't help wiring, you know, like I know people that, you know, deal with a lot of anxiety over things. I just don't, I don't have that. You know, I, I like, you know, I've been jumping off of high things for a long time and I like, you know, I like taking risks and you don't do that by, you know, overthinking, you know, and so right. I, you know, I don't do a lot of that. A lot of that is wiring. So um, and, and so, you know, having good people behind me, um, hiring smarter than myself, um, yeah. which, you know, wasn't hard to do because <laughs> I would hire people that knew how to do things that I yeah. did not know how to do. Um, and along the way I learned those, you know, I That's learned right. those things. And so, you know, ultimately, you know, it, uh, some of it comes, you know, down to wiring. And I would say, look, um, not everybody should grow a big company. Not everybody should expand across the United States. It depends on a lot of who you are. Um, and, and I would say um, most of what's wrong with, so if I'm talking to your audience, most of what's wrong with your company is what's wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. inside. One of my favorite movies is with Ben Seller in, in uh, the, the Secret Life of Walter Mitty and <laughs> him having to deal with this dream of becoming a skateboarder, you know, on the professional th thing at 13, his dad dies and he ends up taking over, uh, you know, he, he ends up taking over uh, a really boring job, leading the family, working at a pizza place the, the you know, the whole story in a few dissect that story, he had to overcome that. Well, one of his survival techniques was he lived in this dream world, but yeah. that wasn't getting him anywhere. So right. a lot of times what, what inhibits us is what's going on inside of us. The other movie I like to anal uh, use as analogy is um, what's eating Gilbert grape. You know, here's another guy that was dealt a set of circumstances. And so a lot of, you know, my, uh, you know, a lot of my talents and a lot of my uh, gifting comes from the hardship that I grew up in my family. And sure. so it taught me a lot of, you know, not only survival skills, but also, you know, ways of dealing with yeah. things in, in chaos. And so I grew yeah, up resourcefulness. <laughs> I grew up in chaos. So, you know, yeah. I went off and created chaos. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, <clears throat> yes, I can see that. And, and the listener um, can hear that clearly. What would you say to the person listening right now that feels like they're in chaos too, but it's just maybe a different level. And, and I kind of go back to your point here of maybe not everybody's designed to have a big company because we're wired differently. And, and you've used this pun intended or not, obviously you're the, you're the wiring guy, you're the power guy. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, exactly. 
but I'm a, I'm a huge fan here. We, we use culture index, working genius. Like, like there's certain ways that we're just designed and, and we play into that and you try to overcome either weakness and or play into the weakness and or strengths. We, there's a whole game plan on that. But right. the person listening right now who's listening to you going, yeah, I feel like I'm in chaos right now. Is it for them to figure out and bring order? Is it for them to just press harder, hire somebody else, make a bigger chaos? Like, I mean, I know it's going to be dependent here, but I'm, I'm wanting your answer on maybe what it's dependent on. I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I think that, you know, I've done all the Myers-Briggs and all the surveys and we implement those things and we interview people with all, all of that in mind, um, yeah. trying not to put people <clears throat> in a, in a situation that they aren't, you know, really going to succeed at because we want people to succeed. So yeah. I think, you know, what, what people have to do is step back and set their expectations, things are not going to self-manage. They're just not, you know, yeah. you, you know, the leader of, of the organization is going to have to figure out who the best people are and then, you know, knight them in their role, let them make mistakes, deal with those mistakes. Don't let them yeah. make them twice, but you know, you, you, it's a constant influx of, of, of teaching and training and, and uh, observing, um, we do a we we do a Monday meeting uh, management call uh, call. It takes two hours. We get an update on every single division in the company. Um, you know, do I need that? Mm, maybe not as much as it's a training tool for all the people that are coming up in the organization. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. They get to see all the decisions from the financial decisions to, you know, the safety decisions. And, you know, right. they're, they're not they're not caught off guard when we get sued for something and they go, oh, well, how did that happen? They, they already knew what was. Yeah. Happening. Yeah. So it's you know, it's it's a great uh, it's a great tool that we use. So um, and and I don't know that there's a really a general question, you know, like I would be more than happy to talk to somebody that, you know, is listening to this that says, you know, hey, let me, you know, unpack a situation and maybe I can get them some specific, you know, advice uh, on that. General yeah. generalizations and comparisons are death. It's good. Just pure, just pure death. Just take a knife to your throat and slit it. If you're doing a sit there and compare yourself to me or to anybody, you know, yep. I, I mean, good. look, every once in a while, when I need a humble, you know, check on myself, I just think back to 1984, April, I started, you know, basically in my garage. Well, there was another guy that started in his garage in 1984. His name is Bill Gates. That's right. I'm not even, my whole life's work hasn't even, it isn't even a rounding error. Comparison <laughs> to him. It's not a rounding error. So I, you know, you take that moment, you go, um, could I do more? Can I, you know, figure this out? Yeah. You know, but just realize that comparisons, you know, really bad. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. Cause there's freedom in that. And there's also, you know, there's, there's, there's a charge also in that. Cause you said like, yeah, could I do more? Yeah. Like that, there's a recognition that there's still, there's still more for you, right. but specifically comparing yourself to him or someone might be listening today going, I mean, dude's done hundreds of millions of dollars. How, right. what, what are you talking about? But, but you're right. That's not even a rounding error for, for the yeah. other guy. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's death, but how does one like take that from what you just heard? So, okay, well, yeah, it's death. I shouldn't compare. I mean, how do I put the blinders on? How do I stay focused on what it is that I'm called to, or that I'm good at? Well, you know, um, you know, I, I, I like to, you know, make a sports analogy. So um, we're all, you know, our bodies are all different, you know. So, I, you know, I, you know, I like to run to stay in shape so I can, you know, do all the things that I like to do. Um, it's not my focus and I don't enjoy it. And somebody said, oh, you should go do a marathon. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know. I, I, you know, I go, go out, I attack, you know, LA marathon and, uh, and, uh, I'm out there and my goal is to do a three and a half, you know, um, three, you know, three hours and, and a half marathon. And I yeah. get to mile 22 
Okay. <laughs> Mile 22. And I am sub three. I'm, I, you know, I'm at uh, two hours and 28 minutes. I, I mean, wow. two hours and 59, 58 minutes. And I'm almost to three hours. And, you know, it takes me 42 minutes to finish the rest of the race. Wow. <laughs> 42 minutes. So it's like yeah. a 10 minute mile. I just yeah. like, I broke. I go look at the stats because, you know, you know, comparison is like, where am I at? The guy that won the race, okay, at mile 22 of 26 miles did a sub five mile. Right. <laughs> it's like, uh, I wasn't built for that. I'm pushing too much beef and gas. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so there's, you know, we're just all different. And so that's yeah. where the comparison thing, it's good to have a measurement, but not beat yourself yeah. up to, to, to be able to say, Hey, this is, you know, I, you know, I can take this to the next level. You know, I I'm, yeah. I'm planning on, you know, uh, you know, growing my company a lot bigger than it is. You know, yeah. but every once in a while, you, you know, kind of look back and say, hey, we, you know, we're doing good. You know, it's not exactly what, you know, uh, what I thought it would be at this point. And, you know, for me, it, it there's always that that impetus at that moment. It was like that would be in a different place, you know, right. than where we are right now. Yeah. So and yeah, and there's lots of market factors and lots of things that you don't control. Exactly. Well, especially over the course of decades, right? Like we were talking about, okay, well, what's my three-year goal? I mean, you're, you told me before we hit the, uh, the record button that you have a hundred year, uh, legacy plan. It's like, well, right. when you start making decisions in centuries, <laughs> right. You know, the, the, the needle that we're moving is different. Right. And, and just, just by virtue, the guy that inspired me to do that, um, he, he had a thousand year plan. Wow. <laughs> And I, I laughed. I said, I can't say that with a straight face. So hundred years, you know, that's, yeah. I, I could, I can do that. Yeah. And maybe it grows into a thousand year plan. Cause I've had that happen before too, where I've, right. I've been around somebody who thinks so much bigger than me. And I just laugh. I just right. chuckle. I'm like, yeah, it would be fun to say that, but I don't currently believe it. So why would I say it? Cause I don't believe it, <laughs> but I can wrap my mind around in this case, a hundred, or I can wrap my mind around be, you know, okay, fine. Maybe it's you becoming right. a millionaire. Maybe it's you right. uh, making sure that all of your kids um, don't have the same blah, 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 you know, whatever that's, right. you know, generational issue in your family. It's like, okay, we got to pick something to your point, make it specific to what we're, what we're doing, what we're called to what we're, what we're passionate about. Um, right. One, one last thing here on this, like growth and not comparison for me, it seems like the answer. And I want to know if like, maybe you agree or if maybe you'd add something here, but it feels like the answer really is like this self pursuit or this mastery of like, I'm, I'm, I'm just after it. I want to keep going. I'm not at my right. best version yet because even though you didn't know before the race that you were a merit, you weren't, you know, a marathon runner, you are a marathon runner cause you finished, but you said, I'm not built for that. Okay. Well, you recognize that maybe later saying, you know, I don't really know if I want to do this every quarter or every year for that matter. Right. But you didn't really know that until you did it. And so you pursued you, you pursued the best version of you. You did it, you tried it and you're like, you know what, check it. But like, no, thanks. Or yeah, that could be the, for a lot of us. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is in order to stay away from comparison, but yet still be the best version of ourselves is like, there's this relentless pursuit towards becoming that. Would you agree? Would you add anything? Yeah. I, you know, I, I think of it, you know, I, th I think of it in terms of, you know, the, the, you know, kind of finding a balance, you know, it's if you don't sleep, you know, like I went through this cycle where everyone was talking about, you know, I can work and do all accomplish all these things on, you know, four hours of sleep. Right. Yeah. You know, you, but you're going to die younger, you know, but by doing that, you destroy your brain. We we are made to rest and we were made to pursue and we were made to you know, to have, you know, a balance. I have 168 hour uh, week, uh, you know, people will say, well, what, you know, what's that, what's that look like? Well, if we sleep 56, we work 50 because if you work less than 50, you're lazy. And if you work more, you're probably a little whack and that's okay. Yeah. If you, you, you know, you go above that, 
and exercise 10 hours a week, okay, you have 52 hours left in your week right. to do it, to, to do whatever you want to do. So it's, it's, you know, how do you, how do we push ourselves and also, you know, take care of ourselves? Because when we get to the, you know, when we get, let's say you hit the success milestone, let's say you burned out your wife and she doesn't, you know, she wants to divorce you or your hate kids hate you, or they don't know who you are or whatever, you know, right. and you, you know, you, you you, your kid's 18 and you introduce yourself, Hey, you know, I'm your dad, you know, um, right. because you, you, you're out of balance. There's a balance and every single person has to find that balance. Now I still run for, you know, for exercise, but I realize that I'm not going to be that, you know, that, uh, you know, that runner that wins marathons or does ultra marathons. I have to pick, right. you know, what do I want to give myself? Yeah. You know, too. So I, I don't, I don't know how else to say it except for, you know, kind of do the internal exploration. As I said, what's, yeah. you know, sometimes, you know, we create chaos because inside of us is chaos and we haven't resolved some things that we're, where we can come to, to balance. And so the only thing we know how to do is like create chaos. Well, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, it's never going to, it's never going to lead to a winning result with the exception of creating, you know, I guess you just got to go, go and create sometimes. And sometimes that creates chaos, but you're talking about just right. out of, out of oh. out knowing. <laughs> oh, you know. absolutely. When I go, you know, away to a conference or something, everyone gets scared at work because they know I'm going to come back and go, Hey, I just <laughs> found out we're going to do this. And they go, Oh Yeah. Well, that's, that's really encouraging to hear at your level because that's what my team says about me, um, as well. And I, and well, there, and there's two sides of the story too, right? Like there's you, you, this is part of your design. This is who you are to the company, right? But that's, it also has to be not curbed. That's not the wrong word, but it has to be, um, prudently, you, you have to do it with like, you know, like a, like a design, like you don't just show up every day with a new idea. Um, it's oh, gotta no, be, yeah. it's gotta be done with maturity, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and if you did that, you know, and well, I did that, you know, at one point we were uh, into all kinds of things. And then what typically happens is some cycle, you know, a, a hurricane of financial disaster comes at you and then you go, well, we really didn't need this and we didn't need that. And you start, yep. you know, get rid of things and, and, and making things sane again. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Is there ever a point in time that you've experienced or that you would maybe suggest that, you know, rather than waiting for that financial kind of hurricane, if you will, to do that for you, that you kind of have maybe a check and balances along the way of like, do we need this? Is this something that we can get rid of now and kind of bringing things back to sane, as you just said, before yeah. the chaos? Yeah. And so, you know, uh, I, I have this, you know, people always say, you know, of public companies or private companies or, you know, they, they, they sort of make a decision point uh, that it's the best thing, like thinking long-term thinking, you know, short-term thinking, mid-term thinking. Well, each one of those things can be very good. There are short-term thinking things that are really, really beneficial. You're nimble, you're, you're fast. Um, what you have to do, what we, what we like to do is ask the question, well, what could go wrong or what's the unintended consequence of this yeah. decision we're making? Because yeah. you can plot those things. You can kind of figure it out. And when you're, you know, planning some, you know, new venture or whatever, what, could, you know, what could go wrong? And, yeah. and, you know, we did that in Texas. We, you know, you know, sent uh, a team of guys out there, you know, with our temp power and, 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 you know, what we were defeated by something we didn't even see the utilities do all that work for them for free. <laughs> How am I going to charge a right. customer for something that, and we, we didn't see that company coming. Right. So that was another, Hey, we can figure this out in advance of us taking a step. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Um, okay, let's talk about a bad decision that you've made. We've kind of um, 
been in a really good place here. I fell in the conversation, give her some great value. Let me, let me hear of a not great hour <laughs> and how you navigated it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that is the, you know, that has been, you know, really, really weighing on me. Okay. So if you take the concept that we don't, and you know, everyone, you know, this is kind of like a known quantity. We never fire people soon enough. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we hang on to people. And especially for me as a, uh, as you know, as a, as a, you know, Christian, I think, well, I can, I can save it. I can figure it out. I can, right. you know, I, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I, I can make this work. And yeah. I did that with the COO in, uh, 2000s. Uh, well, it, it started, he, he kind of created a little bit of a coup, uh, on, you know, on me with a few people. And when I confronted the whole thing and, and, you know, broke it all up, he, you know, he came to me and he said, you know, Hey, I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I should have fired him right then. Had I done that, it would have been a really good decision. It was a really bad decision for me to try and hang on to him. And, um, and, you know, some of the, he, he eventually did it again in 2007 and, um, eventually he stole a laptop, took the hard drive out, took all of our information out, gave the laptop back with a new hard drive in it, you know, a brand wow. new one, and then went on to begin to try and compete with us. Um, and, um, so this individual um, I could have saved myself that, you know, that heartburn at that point, had I seen that and, you know, gotten rid of the person, uh, later on, he went on to dupe, um, several investors into, uh, into a, an investment deal that where they lost, uh, two to th two, uh, 2.3 million. And later on after that, he went and duped a whole bunch of people created a Ponzi scheme and now is, is going to be under trial for mail fraud, wire fraud, a number of things. He's looking at, you know, 40 years in prison and, and he wow. duped his son-in-law into doing that. And I'm thinking to myself, had I yeah. done it then, what would have changed? Now I don't take any responsibility for anything he did to, you know, other people that's on, that's on them. But, yeah, I saw the seeds of something bad in that guy. I did not fire him, and I wish I had fired him. Like, yeah, that. yeah, that, you know, I think it's a really bad decision. Yeah, we can all relate to that. Um, maybe <laughs> not the, the the you know the circumstances that turned out specifically like like yours, but I think we can all relate to that. What do you think is that we hold on to? I mean, is it just because we have a belief in this person? Or we want to see it better. Like we, cause you said, I knew, I saw it. I know it wasn't like a shock, but you still kept him. Yeah. Um, I, okay. So now I'm going to go into what, you know, what I talked about, what's wrong with your company is what's wrong with inside you. So at one point I was praying and asking God, I want to be a better leader. And I got this really clear answer similar to, you know, you know, starting a business, not being a pastor, I got this really clear answer. Two things. One, um, drinking, you know, I was, I, I, I was drinking was, it was, it was hurting my leadership. It was hurting, yeah. you know, it was hurting things. I was drinking too much. Yeah. The second was my mom, my relationship with my mom. And I said, what's the deal? I forgive my mom. And I got this very clear word back. Your mom didn't love you. And I'm like, all moms love their kids. And, and I grew up in a really, you know, bad family. My dad left when I was five. My mom was, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, a crazed sex person. She was like a wow. Marilyn Monroe, James Manfield lookalike. Wow. And she, you know, and she just, you know, went down this road. We were basically neglected. And so I, so, um, I got this, well, remember a time in which your mom intervened, looked at you, loved you, you know, took, and I couldn't think of one and I can remember my whole childhood, every 
bit of it. I don't have like regressive memory. Oh, you can't remember. Um, right. And um, and I so I I asked the question. So then, w- what did I do? He said, "Well, you pretended so you could survive." Mm. Yeah. And so you brought pretending into your leadership. Oh. And so I pretended that this guy was okay. I pretended that I wasn't seeing some of the things I was seeing. I yeah. pretended. Wow. What's eating Gilbert Grape? What's eating Steve Bray? So yeah, yeah, you know those are those are really clear seeds of that, and and that doesn't just go away. You have to right. face it and deal with it. So a lot of times yeah. people go, I, I'm just going to be busy and focus outwardly. But you know, I, I would say to your business leaders out there, what's what's in you that's holding you back? What yeah. you know whether it's your childhood, whether it's, you know, you know, entitlement, whatever it is, you know, um, you know, interesting. Powerful. Story. Yeah. More, yeah. Interesting is the, is the cap, the, the very, very top <laughs> nugget of it. Um, there's a whole lot more in there. Um, <clears throat> I think we could probably have a whole nother show if I kept my curiosity up, uh, on that. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to curb that for a secret conversation that I'll have with you later. Maybe we'll uh, be able to share that, but the the question I got asked about you or I want to ask now is about family. You've mentioned, you know, your family and, and kids and legacy and even just your wife and mm-hmm. uh, like upset. We, we, we talked about balance and, and I hear your definition of balance. And I think that that's right. The word balance rubs me the wrong way just because, you know, I want to go. I want to go all in. Right. Like that's just who we are. Right. We're not balanced individuals. We're obsessive. Right. But I get what you're saying. You're saying. You, you got to have it all like you, uh, 52 hours here, 50 hours here, like organize it. So my question to you is how have you obsessed or balanced your marriage, your kids, legacy yeah. mindedness, as well as right. running a huge company and building it? Right. Well, and, and, you know, there's going to be some holdbacks, you know, so, uh, you know, starting and running a business is harder when you have uh, when you have convictions, when you have morals, when you have integrity, those are hard things. And at, when I was 27, I realized I was working around these people that were like working hundred hour weeks. And I, I projected that out and I said, well, th- that, you know, I'm going to get to this place where I'm really successful sitting there smoking my cigar and my kids hate me and I'm on my third trophy wife. Right. And I I said, I don't want to do that. So I made a decision. I was going to work till six o'clock at night, not work the weekends. I was going to, you know, date my wife, play with my kids. And, you know, and so, you know, I have one wife, four kids and a dog named Skipper and, you know, (laughs) and a white picket fence. (laughs) So, so, and, and look, look, you know, my wife and I have, you know, it, uh, you know, we, once somebody asked me one time, well, how have you, you know, stayed married for, you know, almost 42 years? It's like, well, when we hated each other, we just didn't do anything about it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> because that's, I mean, that's, there, that's, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. There's periods when, you know, I know my wife has just hated me and, you know, there's times when i have like, whatever, you know, and, yeah. you know, d- done the dismissive thing with her. Totally. So, yeah. you know, the, the balance is somewhat of a, you know, it's a decision you have to make. It's not just right. going to come at you. So you look at e- even the hours that I told you, you know, you have to make a decision every week about exercise, about work, about sleep, about, you know, uh, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're pursuing adventure. Um, the, you know, yeah. the battles that you're in all of it, you know, yeah. you, you have to, those are decision points. They're not just going to fall out of the sky. You, they're, they're deliberate. And it's harder when you have ethics, when you have, you know, a, a real conviction, you know, to live a certain way. And so, you know, I, for the most part, my kids still like me. You know, and my <laughs> wife, my wife, my wife was, you know, we were talking about, you know, having this conversation today and she goes, just be yourself, man. 
Yeah. So yeah, well, that's the that's I mean that's how you've been with her, right? Um, yeah. Which is which is a little bit scary actually because I think um, high driving entrepreneurs, uh, at least for me, like I mean some of my like worst moments, uh, the worst I've been to people has been to my wife. Unfortunately, and you're like, well, wait a second, she's the one I love the most, but I've treated the most kindly or the, they're the most poorly um, at times. Right. Right. But to her point there, um, you know, we hopefully got to see the real you today, but um, she's for sure seen the real you. You've seen the real her. Yeah. Um, and the decision that you're talking about is to work through the real version, not right. the version that we saw each other, at, you know, for my wife and I at 18 and 17. And there's just been a lot of growth and change between, you know, 18 and 36 for me and right. 17 and 35 for her. It's like, wow. Right. Um, the decision really is important for sure, but because we're both growing and changing and she's really seen the real me and I've seen the real her. And, and that's the beauty Did of what actually what love at, is now. at 18 and 17. We met then married at 21 and 20. Yeah. So it's been a minute. All right, Steve, I got one last question here for you. And honestly, I've asked this question a lot, but I might be the most excited about your answer. <laughs> Um, I want to know if you had the opportunity to whisper in the younger Steve's ear, what would you tell him? Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no. Uh, what would I tell him? Uh, yeah. I, I would say, uh, you, you know, it's funny because I didn't have the type of growing up, you know, uh, encouragement from parents and things like that. My mom didn't know anything about me. My dad certainly did because he left. Um, but what I would say is that there are good people out there that mm. are rooting for you on the sidelines. You can't see them because you're focused and you're blurred, but you know, yeah, they love you. And I didn't have that, you know, when I started, I was sort of just like, you know, I grew up as a kid that survived. So all those survival skills were really, you know, on one hand, what made me wired the way I was wired. Yeah, and exactly. So was, and so I'm very thankful for those. I never had this moment where, God, why did you do X, Y, Z? You know, no, yeah. I, I, I realized, wow, you know, I get to do what I'm doing because of that, you know, that those experiences and so, and, you know, I, to be honest with you, if you knew my background, you know, I don't ever look at a homeless person and say, how did they end up there? I say, how did I not end up yelling and screaming at the world, you know, on the sidelines? Cause I should, you know, I should be probably dead, you know, yeah. by now. And, um, and, uh, wow. you know, I attribute that to the redemptive story of Jesus in my life. And then that calling and then just kind of utilizing those skills. And so I would tell that younger me, you got this, even, you know, even though you, you feel like you're a bit alone in it, you got this and you can. Yeah. Love every part of that answer. Um, and in fact, this will have to be for that secret next conversation that you and I are going to have, but I've said the same things, some of those same things to myself around yeah. like, I've, you know, I've never had that moment where I was like, Oh, you know, I didn't have a dad or, you know, single mom family, you know, whatever the scenario is, I've always right. counted it as a blessing and part of my story and right. a reason for whatever the, that God has for me. And so, um, I appreciate yeah. that perspective. It's, it's wholesome. It's right. Um, for the ones that are listening right now that, you know, aren't or can't, uh, or, or maybe don't know how to get to that place of just really just being okay with the good and the bad and the ugly and allowing it to be fuel. Really. Um, mm. I would encourage you to do that. Um, you know, for, for Steve and I, it's obviously, like I said, it's faith based, um, and, uh, being redeemed when you know, when you know, you're not worth anything to begin with. Um, when you know, you need a rescuer, <laughs> it doesn't really matter how great or how bad the circumstances are. You need a rescuer. So, um, I think that that's, that's a great place. I'm, I'm just, Thankful to be in arms with you on that. But Steve, how can the listener find you? Number one, if they, I don't know, maybe they're listening and they run a big old hospital and they need, they need their copy machine, uh, <laughs> not their actual copy machine, but they, they need help. Um, or 
if they're just a, a business owner and they're looking to connect with an incredible, incredible mature king or sage, how can they find you? So they can reach me on my email, srbray at powerplus.com. That's the best uh, way to do it. Um, you, you know, reach out, reference, you know, this podcast, you know, Chaz Wolf, and, you know, I'll respond to it. I have a really quick finger. Ding, ding, ding. Delete. Delete. <laughs> um, delete. I have no social media whatsoever. Um, I'm one of two humans that never opened a Facebook page. And <laughs> I, I really don't want to spend my time, you know, trying yeah. to get likes and followers. I had an Instagram for probably two years. I had 14 followers and, uh, and I, it was too much for me to manage. You know, yeah. A lot going on there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's simple. Uh, you know, I'll, I will respond. Um, I enjoy, you know, answering questions, bantering back and forth. And, you know, when we do that, we'll, you know, we'll set up yeah. a call or something if somebody wants to reach out. Yeah. And, I, uh, I appreciate that. This, even the simplicity of it, I appreciate uh, your willingness to help as well. Um, Steve, you have been um, sensational here today. Thank you for telling us just even pieces of your story. Um, I personally am going to press in and, and get to know the full story, but um, thank you for your time. Thank you for just the endurance of decades of, of work and persistence and pursuit of your wife and all of the things we've talked about here today. We wish you nothing but blessing in all of those things as you continue. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it, Chaz. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together one thousand kings specifically who are grateful but not done we're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business family and communities and here's what we believe that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy so if that relates and and resonates with you and you know that you need people around you sharp qualified other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.